Welcome back to the vlog. In this particular episode, I want to do two things to test this new Lavalier microphone that I've just got and also to answer some comments on my recent photo book showcase. Let's do this. I recently got this Maono AU400 wired lavalier microphone. It is a budget product. I bought it for about 25 ringgit. That's less than six US dollars. It is very cheap, so I'm not expecting a lot from this particular microphone. The reason I got this budget level of microphone is as a backup. I am a photographer. I have backup to backups. My main microphone for my main YouTube channel all my talking headshots, I've been using the Sennheiser wireless lavalier microphone and I'm very happy with the Sennheiser's microphone's performance. The wireless transmission has always been reliable, I have no issue whatsoever and the audio quality, it really flatters my voice and there is that clarity and depth in my voice that's recorded from that microphone that I really like. However, that microphone is not cheap. I think it costs about 300 ringgit, that's more than 10 times times more than what this Maono microphone is asking for. So as a backup, I don't need something that expensive, but I do need something reliable, something good enough. I don't know how this Maono AU400 performs. This is my first time bringing this microphone out and doing an actual test. So I'll have to go back to, to my computer, load the files and really listen to the audio quality coming out from this microphone. Since this is a really cheap microphone that's like 25 ringgit and this is my first time testing it, I have no expectations. If it is not good enough, I will not use it. I'll just put it aside and look for another lavalier microphone. That's the beauty of this second YouTube channel, my vlog channel. I can do experiments here. I can test certain products before I integrate them or use them in my main channel. If it fails, it fails. It has very little consequence. So to test this, Lavalier microphone, I've been using this since the beginning of this video and for the entire video, I'll just speak through this Maono AU400. To continue talking, <laughs> I will answer some questions regarding my photo book showcase, which I did in my recent video in the main channel which is talking about me receiving the OM1 as a gift from a generous donor. But at the end of that particular podcast series, I actually showed a recent photo book that I have printed. And that photo book has got some really interesting comments and questions from some of you. Dev Bellamy asked, who printed the lovely photo book? Some of them in the UK are very expensive. I think some of my East Asian friends get theirs down there and sent over. The photo book that I've showed in that particular video, it was printed by Photobook Malaysia. Yes, there's a website called Photobook Malaysia. I've been printing my photo books there since many, many years ago. I've done prints for my clients. Uh, I've also printed large photo books with hardcover lay flat for wedding couples, whether it's a pre-wedding portraits or even actual day wedding photography. I've also printed a lot of photo books for myself, for my personal projects, mostly a collection of my street photography series, shutter therapy sessions. I usually would print about two to three books per year. There's no point to print so many at one go. I just print the best or the images that I really, really like, uh, collect them, compile them into one particular book. And it takes time to really get good shots. I think printing is important for photography. If you are a photographer, you should learn about printing and photo book is very cheap, it is accessible, at least here in Malaysia, one photo book costs about 50 to 60 ringgit, a soft cover, about A4 size. Uh, it's decent size, it's not small, it's large enough to impress and it's, it definitely beats showing people your photographs through a small smartphone screen or even a tablet screen. On paper, on print, the images will definitely have that tangible feel. It looks more realistic, it looks more organic because what we see in real life 
anything in real life, the light shines on the subject and the light is reflected to our eye. So when you look at screen, the screen actually shines its own light. So it's not so natural. So when we look at prints, they are paper, right? So it actually reflect light and that is actually more realistic. Now, for the book Malaysia, uh, it's quite popular. I think a lot of my friends use it as well. Probably not the best in terms of print quality, but you get what you pay for. It's really cheap, it doesn't break the bank, and you can enjoy some really good prints. Alberto Berti asked, nice photo book, very nice compositions. Love the two-page white cat on the lap. Thank you so much, Alberto. Can I ask you what kind of photo book is that among those available on the website? Just to have a clear reference of what can be obtained. Well, there are different sizes, different shapes. You want to print it in a portrait vertical format or landscape format. You want to print it large or even something really small, like a coffee table book. You want hardcover, softcover, different kinds of hardcover, there's different types of binding. If I'm to print for a client, I would use a lay flat binding. There are so many different kinds of options available. There's also different kinds of paper for you to choose from. Of course, there's a different price range, depends on how much you are willing to spend on the photo book. For me, I chose uh, just a simple soft cover, uh, the typical A4 size. I just want something that I can carry along with me, something small, not too small, at least it's big enough to show off my photographs but not too big that I can't fit in my bag something easy to carry and to show my photographs to my friends instead of just showing them through my smartphone screen I think that's one tip that I can definitely share with you show your photographs in print that can definitely take your phot photography to the next level BHHBCC asked the book is great, the print seems very good, the portraits challenge me to achieve such results. Not yet. What lens do you use for the full face portraits? Please show more books, it can teach us a lot. Also, please let me compliment you on your positive take on life. You inspire your viewers to live better. Thank you so much, that is such a kind compliment. I certainly don't deserve that. Coming back to the question, what lens did I use for full face portraits? If you are referring to that particular photo book, it's a mixture of different cameras and different lenses. I've used the GR3X, which I've borrowed from Matty. I think some of the photographs were taken with the Panasonic LX10, which I borrowed from another friend. If I'm using my Micro Four Thirds system, I will definitely shoot with the Olympus 45 f1.8 for tight close-up portraits. That's my favorite lens for Portraits of Strangers series. Sometimes I will use a 15 millimeters equivalent if it's Micro Four Thirds, then it's a 25 millimeters lens, or if I'm using my full-frame cameras, say, Nikon or Canon, then it will be the 50 f1.8 lens. Sometimes I'll use an 85 f1.8 as well. Typically, I will use something longer, 50 millimeters or 85 millimeters, longer lenses for tight portraits. It just shows a, it creates a more flattering result. There's less distortion, the proportion, they look as they are. There's uh, no as a duration of like the face being stretched or the nose being too big. And I think for portraits, I prefer to work with longer lenses. This is one of the challenge filming in this park. It may seem like it's silent, but there are insects screaming in the background and I have no way to control that. I can't just walk up to the insects and ask them to stop screaming. I don't really know what insects those are. Maybe they are crickets, maybe they are cicadas, some kind of high pitch, really annoying. I'm um, not sure if you can hear it with this microphone. We'll see you later after I've inspected the audio recording. Ryujo Shinkunshi Ryu, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, I think it's a Japanese name, uh, commented, thanks for sharing your photo book. I used Google to make a photo book a few years ago. I never thought about a two-page spread. Yours was inspiring. Well, the two-page spread is quite a, a dramatic way to present a photograph. I think in newspaper or magazine, whenever you have something really dramatic, something really impactful, they'll just do a two-page spread. And that's also one way for us to emphasize on these photographs that actually we want to highlight in that particular book or your favorite, right? Uh, also, not all kinds of photographs work 
in a two-page spread, it depends on your composition, whether it's a tight shot or whether there's too much happening. But generally, I do love two-page spreads and it also involves some cropping and you have to think about a more horizontal or a longer kind of composition. And that's the beauty of making a photo book. You get to experiment, you get to try different things, you get to show your photographs in different ways. So keep trying, uh, it's a lot of trial and error to get it right. Park commented, hey Robin, are your photos in photo book 3x2 or 4x3? All photo books sellers around me sell 3x2 or 1x1 photo books. Cheers. It doesn't matter what ratio they sell, it can be 3x2, it can be 4x3, it can be whatever. And don't be afraid to crop your photographs. There's nothing wrong to crop your photographs. And if you don't want to crop your photographs, it's also a good idea to have some borders around the photograph, some white frames in a photo book. That's perfectly fine. I don't think that's an issue whatsoever. The insects are screaming louder and louder. I think that's a cue for me to stop this video. I hope you have enjoyed looking at my photo book, which I've shared in the other video on my main channel. And I don't know how this microphone performs. Let me know in the comments below if you like the sound coming out from this microphone. This is Maono AU400. It's a 25 ringgit or six US dollars microphone. If it's not good, who cares? I will not use it. I'll find another cheap microphone or maybe I should just get another Sennheiser just for backup. I don't know, I'll decide later. That's the thing, we have to try, we have to experiment and this vlog is where I experiment and try different things. If you've enjoyed this particular episode, please, please subscribe and I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Bye-bye!